the 1980s, people, inhabitants of the Soviet Union were perceiving the Soviet Union as very corrupt. Was Estonia an exception in this regard? Was Estonia more or less corrupt and how was it? Uh, not at all. I think that was not just possible to live in the communist country and not to be corrupt. Because communism, that uh, in translation you can translate it, it corruption, because they are very combined and they are very connected. So in communist uh, system, the people are just so corrupt that they don't understand themselves that they are corrupt. And that was our problem at the beginning quite strongly. That's a problem for everywhere of former communist countries. And when did this change? So when can you say that corruption became like the exception here? Because corruption a little bit exists everywhere, you, you know. Yes, of course, the main goal first of all is that uh, it couldn't exist. So you must be quite tough in the beginning so, because when you are not putting this as a goal, then that's hopeless to get rid of it. And when you want to launch really economic reforms. It's not possible with corruption. Corruption is the biggest disease of modern world. So you have corruption, then you have no economical development because corruption destroys the rule of game in the market economy. And actually you couldn't have market economy when you're highly corrupted. And that we can see in a lot of in several developing countries because actually Every attempt to build the market economy ends in corruption and actually kills the market, real market economy quite fast. And so that was absolutely crucial for us to deal with corruption at the beginning. And actually that was one what we, maybe not exactly the first thing, but it was among the first things with whom we started. And actually that's important effort for everybody. Actually, corruption, the fight against corruption, it doesn't come at the end, it must come at the, in the beginning. Most of the laws we just had, those government changing laws we had soon then ready. So when we started to build the government, we built the government soon basing on the laws, what we were preparing. So it went quite smoothly then, because quite several laws we had soon then ready, like the government laws and the administration law and so on, and moved away, liberalized, moved away a lot of uh, regulations. So we liber liberalized all society. And then less is possibilities for every state representation people to become corrupt than less they be. So then less such a regulation, then uh, less corruption. So we had to think just to find a way and uh, to make again everything very simple. That was principle. So to have less laws and to have so simple laws that everybody can understand. That the same what we did with economic reforms. The most important is this decision, I will do something or I will do not. And it's always simpler to do and to start from those uh, things is uh, from the, again, administration and public service. That's very possible to everybody. And uh, liberalize everything and deregulate. And it starts to work everywhere. So you don't need is that government, is that president, there is no just one uh, law, it just happens. So sometimes it's president, sometimes it's government and prime minister. So it depends from country to country. But uh, that's the same that you must and deliberize very strongly and you must really uh, very much play on the public service. We were elected by accident, we can say. So actually, when you launched all the campaign like a rock concert, 
then there will be a lot of people who like the campaign because uh, there has been never been so much music in the campaign. But you have the majority to pass this legislation. Uh, one vote. By one vote? Uh, so we had to move the people from the hospital to give the birth from, to the child to the, back to the parliament to vote and get back to the hospital. So actually we passed all the laws very narrowly with very much political fighting. What law is that, sir? What law is this specific law where you had to take someone from? I must say every law. So you had a Minister of Justice that you could trust? He had very good, one of the best. What's his name? Kaito Gama. He was in the Soviet time, he was criminal. He was accused in criminal acts in the Soviet time. He was not a criminal, but in the Soviet time you get very simply used. So now university you took it and that. So you took someone who was a criminal in Soviet times and made him Minister of Justice? More or less, yes. <laughs> but he was just... Uh, uh, clever people with very strong ethical principles. And actually, even we, are, we, we got a lot of fights because he was, he was even more radical as I am. I was quite mild people in my government, I must say. <laughs> you are the mildest person in your government, right? <laughs> I was one of the mildest, yes. <laughs> and all these people have been in the resistance, more or less, before? No, that, not more or less, but absolutely. This uh, government law we wrote with the main author of them, uh, actually together in the German in Kiel in one conference uh, together, and um, actually after the um, this uh, legislation, so then he uh, went to university because he was expelled in the Soviet time university. He studied law then, but uh, as he had the idea to marry in the church, so then he was expelled and became priest afterwards. And uh, now he was member of parliament. And uh, after this, he uh, went to the university and gave the exam to the same question of the law, what he has himself wrote, written. spoke with them a lot of times, with Qatar and everybody, because I had very different uh, understanding of what they are doing. So their understanding was that it's quite, uh, that's not a problem, so let them be corrupted at the beginning. And afterwards, they just become rich and decent businessmen. And they always say, that's like America. And I said, Sorry, I don't think that it's very much like America. And uh, they said only that, uh, as in America was wide west, then we are having wild east, and that's okay. And I said, that's not okay at all. So I think, and so we studied very much what's happening in Russia during the first steps, and we saw all the problems. And, but what similar was that our police was as well, quite weak, like in Russia. So it was no hope to fight uh, the criminality with police at the beginning. So it took time when you build it, uh, courts and independent and police forces. And then we just uh, followed what they're doing in economy and we tried to avoid something. First of all, that uh, we didn't let the, uh, the banks taken over from organized criminality because uh, when the banks are taken over from mafia or through mafia, what happened in Russia, then actually that's very hard to stop because then the, the criminality and that means corruption go to the privatization and then to the politics and so on, like, like happened in many countries actually. 
And what is the sequence here? Because I, I thought now that I had understood from you that you were watching Gaidar's reforms. Yeah. So those happened a little bit before you initiated, so you could yeah. learn yeah. from... One year different. And why do you think Ukrainians, why do you, don't you, do you think President Yushchenko, for instance, didn't go the same way? Yushchenko was afraid too much. And this too much was the advice. We tried to give him Eastern advice, but he was a little bit scary, even uh, because I, I worked with President Yusek because he asked me and Anders Haslund to come after the Orange Revolution and to say to him what he's doing, and I tried to be so mild as possible. Actually, first of all, there were all reforms by law. And actually, it's simple to just turn some decree away, but it's quite hard to, to change the law. It demands a lot of work. And the communist I must say to you, don't like work. So when would you say, I mean, returning to the original point of this conversation, where you said that basically most of the Soviet establishment was corrupt, when would you say that you could say with confidence that you built new rules and now corruption is the exception. By what year you would I felt think, that? Yeah. We can, first we would say it to the end of my government, so somewhere with three years or so, when the first results were seen. But uh, very strong results came soon second time. So this is 94, 95? The results we can see, we saw 94, 95, but the serious results came probably within years when the court system started to work effectively. Now they try again, but uh, I must say it doesn't look very good. Why not? Due to the security situation or? No, actually, they are not doing those things at home. So I don't see very much that uh, they are really fighting the corruption. Uh, they speak much about it. But they just arrested somebody from the government. Oh, yeah, but uh, yeah, they can do, but again, don't talk, but do, but they have not changed the energy regulation. Because to arrest people is simple things, but to change the energy regulation is a hard thing.